Good day, everybody. It's Nathaniel Evans, host of I'm a Data Podcast. Also, host Jeannie Muhammad. Uh, it's great to see y'all today. Um, we're looking forward to this great topic, you know. And like you said, you know, we focus on leadership, focus on happiness and the development and the person. That's why it's called I'm a Data. So many people say, you know, what is I'm a Data about? You know, look at the title of it. You know, look at the man, the icon, and you actually see that it's actually about you as an individual. It's all about us as people. Um, Jeannie, introduce I yourself. Am, to you. Thank you, uh, Nathaniel. I am Jeannie Muhammad, your global happiness expert. I, You know how there are so many of us that go through challenges in our lives, and we get lost in those challenges. Well, what I do... Uh, <laughs> Good, Jeannie. I got it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, Jeannie, it seemed like Jeannie got stuck again. Um, I don't know what's happening, um, but she kind of froze up. So we're going to move on, and we're going to introduce um, Didi was Hairston, the diva with depression. That's, that's an amazing name. I actually wanted to say that. It actually stood out to me. And, you know, I'm actually interested in this conversation to see, you know, where this takes us, you know, what you've been building and actually how, you know, we can apply this to actually assist other people, you know, especially in this time here, you know, we're dealing with a very Definitely. critical time. And I think that people, you know, need to focus on a lot of more, you know, intuitive things about who they are. You know, right. and actually focus on a lot of external factors that actually creates like this illusion of a person, right? And I'm talking for also personal experiences. When you lose these illusions, you know, it's kind of like something just came and just chopped you apart, right? Just right. took a little little chunk out of you, right? And you like, what's what's going on? What's happening? What's happening mm -hmm. is that you know, from what I see, is that when you when you attach yourself to things that outside of who you are, you leave yourself exposed to so many different changes in your life. And a lot of times when we create realities, we're not, we don't create those realities with an end in mind. Like something's going to change, you know, I'm going to lose everything or, you know, I'm going to have to start over or, you know, I might get a divorce. Like you never think about these things until these things actually take place. Cause we have like this utopian concept of mindsets where like, we own these different things and, and, and they always put to belong to us. So I don't want to take all your time, but I actually want you to actually, you know, get your word in and Gina, when <laughs> she get a chance. Well, thank you for having me. Um, awesome. I, I, Jeannie is one of my favorite people. We met a couple of years ago in a public speaking course and she's been my favorite since then. Nice. Um, my name is Dee Dee Hairston and I am Diva with Depression, which is a, a platform that I started in 2015, I think. Mm -hmm. And I started as a blog because I live with severe depression. And I wanted to give people a look into what it's like to live in, with a mental illness. Because sometimes we see it on TV, we see it on movies, and you yeah. think that it's, you know, tied up in a bow. And that's not how it is. We really, really need to start getting into what mental illness is, especially in black and brown communities. So I started uh, talking to women at first, and a lot of them were saying that they didn't even know that they had depression, that, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't know the symptoms, they didn't know what to do. So that pushed me to start the blog. And the feedback that I got was amazing, you know, and I just think that my purpose is to get black and brown communities to erase the stigma of, of depression and mental illness so we can get help. And that can include, you know, some of us have to break trauma, generational trains. We have to do all of this to get ourselves together. That's true. So, and I would like, I don't really do interviews. Um, <laughs> we actually do like discussions. And this concept of, you know, being the diva with depression is, 
is what what is the what is the diva part of it? Like what is because it's basically what people want to know, like how do you tie that into depression? Well, actually, the, the name came from myself and my daughters. I have okay. two daughters, and everyone called us the divas, you know, and we would go somewhere and they go, Oh, the divas are here. And yeah. because I live with a mental illness, and so do my daughters, it started out as divas with depression. And um, they said, no, they don't want to be involved. <laughs> so we stuck with diva with depression. I am far from a diva. I'm a tomboy. Um, no diva attitude, no diva anything. I'm, I'm the opposite. But um, I thought that it was wonderful to try to include part of my life in the title and part of my daughters who are a huge part of my life in the title. Mm, awesome. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you always want to know the history of things and where they where they basically sprung from. And, you know, you say, you know, you're a convoy, you just... <laughs> I am. Right? You know, just, I am. Just hiding in plain sight, type, you know, so to speak. Um, I have two brothers. I grew up with two brothers. So yeah. um, I'm always, I was always playing football. I was always climbing trees. I was always wearing... My mother would have to pay me to wear a dress. So I am um, a tomboy and not a diva, but I, I love the name and I, I thought that it caught on really, really quickly. So I stuck with it. Yes, it's definitely um, a great concept. Yeah, it's definitely a great concept. Oh, let me pause. Yeah, this is, you can hear me? Okay. Yes. So this is definitely a, a great concept and I believe that to change the framework of the things that we actually go through, especially in spaces of harm that's dealing with depression, you know, mental health, you know, anxiety, stress. These are these are all places of harm yes. if they're not actually addressed and checked, you know, in a great in an early fashion, right? Yes. Basically, like you know, being early diagnosed with cancer or something like that actually, you know, preserves your rights, you know, or basically preserves the ability for you actually to overcome this illness right. other than actually later on in the process. Definitely. And the concept of deeper with depression, I actually, I actually want you to hold that. Cause I know, I know that, I know that you look at it like for us, like it's just a part of your experience, but the deeper part, like with, with that deeper part, what it entails, it's a great thing to hold on to because it gives you the freedom to move around in spaces that normally would actually trap you, right? Exactly. You know, so so like you know, I'm this diva. You know, what I mean, I move at my own pace, my own energy. You know, I create the world that's around me, right? And even though I'm aware, and this is you know, the great point, is that to be aware that I have this level of depression that I'm able to still function on a high octane level. And that's a beautiful thing, you know, especially in this day and time where we don't know life. I always say this to people, we don't know right. life. We, we, right. we strive to know life. We, we take little things that we um, extract from the world and we put them together like little puzzles. Right. And we create this great grandiose picture for ourselves, right? And look at us now. Look what we have. Look what we're doing. You know, right. look at the latest thing. We have it now. You don't have it yet. You better go get it. And right. we have this competitive nature about who we are. And in the same token that we actually have competitiveness with one another as far as industries, um, one another as far as, you know, who can sing the best, who dances the best, and all these different things that we entertain ourselves with in this world that we have and this life that we have. We use that same energy to actually look at things that actually affect us from within and actually address those things and challenge those things and put those things in a proper category. Then we'd be able to control those things on a higher level. Then we actually control a lot of external factors that we actually engage ourselves with on a day basis. I think that one of the problems or issues is that Black and brown communities see mental illness as a weakness, as being a failure. And so they're um, less likely to come forward. And these are things that now I have lived with a mental illness since, since I was younger. And once I had my first breakdown, I heard that 
you know, about the my ancestors that lived with mental illness on both sides of my family. So that shows that this is something that's been going on from generation to generation and no one um, found the time, not found the time, but nobody wanted to address it because they were embarrassed. And so what I talk about is the fact that it exists, you know, and if you, just like you mentioned cancer, if someone mentions that they have cancer, we're all rallying behind them. We're taking them to get their medication and, and chemo and everything. But if someone says that something is wrong with them mentally, then we want to shy away. I can't tell you how many, and I just gave this speech last week about how many family and friends I disconnected from because they didn't know what to do about me having a mental illness or how to handle it. And so uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so that was a, another great reason. Um, thank you for having me um, during this month, but we have to start shying away from hiding from each other. Like you said, there's so much that encompass us, encompasses us personally. And so if we go to therapy, if we take medication if necessary, support groups and be more open about what we're really facing, then that makes us healthy. That brings us back to the whole that you were talking about. Yeah, because without 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 this human connection, any other thing that we create in the world that has a connectivity component to it is right. meaningless. Right. right. We can run around and we can create huge engines, right, for trucks and airplanes and things of that nature. And every component must work simultaneously together in order for it to function. Right. Right. And we take for granted that we can create these things and we can create them on external factors, but we can't create them on internal factors. And the breakage of one another when we're going through mental illness, anxiety, stress, depression, right, actually is an indication of the chain, of the links and the chains that we perceive that we created in the relationships that we have created in the world. Right. We come to a notion and say that these particular people will be here for me regardless of what I go through. Right. And when they don't, this is when a deeper with depression actually steps in and say, OK, this is my personal battle. This is what I have to do for myself. Right. This is about self-care. This is about self-love. And this is about me navigating through all the little pits and hurdles that's actually trying to get me to get to what Jeannie and I always talk about my inner peace. Right. Right. So a lot of times external factors may deem to be your inner, inner peace for yourself until you go through changes in the world and realize that you are that inner peace that you actually seek in the world. And being and being this person allows you to, to challenge the norms that society has created around mental health, society right. has created around depression. I've actually worked in mental health organizations, right? And to see the, to see the dynamics of a lot of the organizations that I've worked in and dealing with mental health, it was really a lot of times depressing in itself because right. the proper tools and resources was not available for the population. And I don't exactly. mean I don't. And then a lot of see, and this is this is where the misconception comes when I'm in boardrooms and I talk to different people. The misconception is that when I'm talking to them, it they're under the impression I'm talking about housing or employment dealing with mental health illness. We're not talking about this. We're talking about the structure that you created that doesn't placate to the concept of healing mental illness from internally, right? right? You don't have no positive, vibrant colors. You don't have slow, no, no motivational or focused music in your hallways where people can soothe themselves down and calm themselves down. You don't have, you know, any direct therapeutic, you know what I'm saying, functions in there, you know, Therapist that's on staff, you know, specialized therapists on staff, yoga experts, massage experts, you know, acupuncture, all these different aspects that actually deals with the inner person, right? It's missing from a lot of these components because, as you said earlier, they don't understand, right? So if we've been in existence, because they, they basically say that we've been in existence for millions of years, and other people say we've been in existence for a shorter time than that, right? It varies from group to group and person to person, right? We've been around that long. 
how is it possible we don't understand concepts that actually deals with the inner person instead of the outer person? I think that we do understand, you know, as uh, as black and brown people, we do understand. And I think that putting mental illness aside is what got us here today. We had to put that aside to physically be present for ourselves, for our family, be strong, you know, the strong black woman, the strong black man. We always had to take on those roles. And so we had to put the mental illness aside to focus and survive because, you know, we're sometimes endangered species in our communities. And so in order to fight that battle on a day-to-day basis, we had to put that aside. That's why the name of my podcast is Behind the Mask. It's because when we wake up in the morning and have to leave, we put that mask on and we become the employer. We become the mom, the dad, the, the employee, you know, whatever you need to face. And then when you come home, you take it off. And we have to stop doing that. The same face that we wear at home is what we should show the world so they can see that this is not, I'm not saying that it's easy. This is one of the hardest battles that I've ever had to fight. Every single day, I fight with my mind to function. But if we start getting loud about that and saying, you know, I'm not feeling well today, I'm not doing well mentally, then people will start to maybe research and understand what's going on or talk to you. If you go to work and you say, I'm, <clears throat> I'm mentally not here today, then your coworker should say, well, you know, tell me about that. Um, maybe I'm living with those same symptoms. Maybe somebody in my family is living with those same symptoms. So mm-hmm. we have to, we have to, we have to stop being quiet about how we're suffering because we we fought so many battles, 500 years of battles, and we're here. And so we can't let this take us down. We have to keep fighting. Yeah, definitely. You know, and Jeannie, are you able to speak? My, while my internet is here. <laughs> All right, so speak. For the right, so. But I wanted to say, um, D. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, Gene. Um, but I did want to address the concept with the mask, and that's a very interesting analogy to use. And because you know, we have put this mask on, and like you say, you know, on your cover, I see is a, it's a white mask, right? Yes, and you know, as we go into the world, it's this mask when we don't really realize it. You know, the, the more that we met to wear the mask, the more that the mask breaks down, right? Little chips and little cracks and stuff start taking place on the mask. And we don't realize it a lot of times what we connected this mask of who we are to in the world, right? right? And, you know, I always put up different posts and stuff like that on social media. But one of the things I always tell people is that anything that you control also controls you, Right? Don't believe that you are, you know, infinite to the things that you have created and brought into your life, right? Those same things have equal dominance or sometimes even greater dominance over you than actually who you are as a person. Right. You may associate yourself to a car, you know, you may associate yourself to having money, right? You associate yourself to being the best dress dresser, you know, in, in the room, right? And what happens one day when you're when you don't have a car, right? When, when you lose all your money and you're no longer this best dress, dresser, why, what happens to you then? Right. And and this is when the mask that you speak about starts to shatter, it starts to break, right? And sometimes it breaks in half, sometimes it breaks completely. And now you're like, where is the where is the pieces, right? Like, I right, was so one day I witnessed somebody, right? They had broke a mirror on a car. Right. And I'm I'm watching. I said, what's going on? He said, well, you know, I broke my mirror on my car and it's picking up the little mirror pieces. I was like, what are you going to do with the pieces? And he's like, I'm going to take it, you know, to the guy, figure, put it back together to put it, you know, back on my car mirror. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. It's already gone. It's shattered. Right. I said, you got to go buy a new one. So even in life, sometime when those, when those masks shatter, we have to go get new masks. Right. Or we have to say, you know what, I'm going to stick with the mask of who I am. 
as an individual and wear that mask at all times, right? right. And this is a challenge in the world because who's a, who accepts the real person? Like who expects, who really accepts the real truthful person that's in the room, right? With if you if, if if the commissioner of some infamous place came to the organization and and you said you know the policy that you're using is not effective you know saying to bring forth change and I believe that you need to bring about twenty of our cohorts from this audience into your organization so we can actually bring forth this change right you will become the enemy in the room because now you have shifted the balance from what things are usually are most of the time. And it becomes scary when you're the only person in the room, right? However, you must keep who you are, and I've learned this personally, who you are in the room at all times so you won't get tricked in the room, right? There, there, there's spaces like when you meet somebody, when you meet somebody on the train, you meet somebody on a bus, let's say you, you introduce them into your life. You say, let's go out for dinner, right? You have brought this person into your room, into your space, right? You need to know who and what you're bringing into your space and how that's going to affect you in the short, middle, and also the long term, right? Because when we're dealing with the, as we conquer these things, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this, as we conquer mental health, the concept of mental health, depression, anxiety, and things of that nature in the core of our society as far as like how we treat each other that actually interacts with it, right? Or exposed to it. Once we actually conquer that, now we can get to the root and find out how we can actually assist one another through this, through this basically difficult, you know what I'm saying? And basically unknown battle, right? Because we, we don't know what goes on in our hearts and minds of other people. So we have to actually take the time out to understand what, what it is, you know what I mean, that we're trying to understand about each other. Because mm -hmm. as we learn more things about one another, we learn things about ourselves. Right? There's no separation between you and I. Yes, I know that you're you're a female and I'm a male. Yeah, I can't have children, but you can't, you you can't, but you can't bring forth children by yourself. So we're equal, you know what I'm saying, in our relationship. This is an equal relationship. We're on the same page. Yeah, I might, be, I might be stronger than you. That's great, bro. Like, but there are other things in the world that you can do greater than me as well. I can't do certain things. I can't breastfeed my sons and daughters. And we didn't have these industrial factories that made milk and things like that for our children. We would have to solely rely on our women to basically feed our children until they get to the age be able to consume food as we do. Right. So we we it's like minimizing the value of women because we have created these industrial complexes that makes the makes what the woman naturally produces for her own children. Right. So once we understand these different dynamics, we can actually bring forth many changes about who we are and what we're trying to learn about who we are as people. This is about humanity. Right. right? This is about who we are as a people, our, our journey and our manifestation of learning about what makes us tick, right? And how to eliminate harm into the world, right? So this is important to see, and I don't want to take up too much time for you, but this is important to see how we treat each other on the lowest platforms in our society. This is an indication of who we are, right? right? It, you know, I didn't want to bring this topic up, but it's weird. But it's 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 actually talking about the man that actually got choked out on the train the other day, you know, in Manhattan, because they said he he was asking for food, he's asking for water, right? And we get to a society where we can't ask each other for food and water, you know, without physical harm coming to us. It's amazing because we 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 coming from a society that's basically indulge, right, deeply in all religious type of factors, right? We have religious connotations all through the world from one culture to the next, from one religion to the next, right? And in all these spaces, and this is where we come back to the root of who we are, and all these spaces that they actually practice these things, right? It all talks about compassion, love, 
forgiveness, mercy, truth, honesty. This is the premise of what they're based on, right? So right. is the premise based, is the premise only valid inside of closed circuits? Or is this a universal concept that must be applied regardless of who you are or where you actually came from in the world? I think that we're getting better um, with thinking about mental illness and who we are as people because we're having the conversation. So I know that tomorrow I can get, I'm, I'm a helpline coordinator and I know that someone's gonna come in, call in and they're gonna want to get help for their child. And so in, in a space of 20 minutes, I can give them help for their child, but I can also explain to them why their child is acting a certain way, explain to them the, the necessary pieces of the illness, things that they didn't know before they called in. Mm. 10 years ago or in 2006, when I had my breakdown, people weren't having that conversation. Black and brown people weren't having that conversation. You know, at work, it, you know, you go to work and it's just, it's hell. You know, I called it hell. But now, you know, especially after the pandemic, now companies are starting to pay attention to the fact that if you don't take care of the souls of your employees, you're not going to get anything done. You're not going to make money. Your, your corporation cannot run. So they have gotten better. We have gotten better at having the conversation and getting help, but it doesn't trickle down to our communities. You know, we have um, horrible health care mm -hmm. in the world, but in black and brown communities, the trickle down what's left is not quality care. So That's we don't right. know how to look for a therapist. We don't know how to look for a psychiatrist. You know, we're just going to the doctor real quick. And if we have a cold or, you know, if we have, a headache, but we're not going into the doctor and saying, my soul hurts. You know, I'm crying for no reason. Um, I can't concentrate. I can't think. I can't function. We, we're not saying that. And we have to say that. We have to share with people that this is what it looks like, you know, and depression is only a small part, not a small part, but it's only one part of mental illness. You have schizophrenia, which yeah. is a high number in our black communities. You have anxiety, which is a high number across the board. You have bipolar disorder, which is another high number across the board. These are all things that are happening in our communities. And we're just saying, oh, she's depressed. Oh, she had a bad hair day. Oh, mm -hmm. she's not feeling well. It's much, much more than that. And if we get to the root of that, then I think that we can start addressing some of the things that you talked about about being a whole person, being a better person, and passing that along in the community. Yeah, because because our legacies speak volumes for those of of for those that it changes. You know, people learn from our stories, they learn from our journeys, our experiences, right? We have a lot to offer and we are invaluable in so many ways, right? right. There's really nothing in the world that can measure up to us as being alive in the world and thriving in the world and eating our favorite sandwich in the morning and different things. See, these are these are beautiful pleasures that have been given to us as gifts and it's been given to all of us, right? And yes, some people may be able to handle this, this life on, on a higher plane than others, right? However, it's that that's not a gift to you, right? Yeah. The gift to you about having a higher understanding of others is to actually come back to give others that also that higher understanding. That's the right. gift. To you. The gift to you is not to actually monopolize this concept, not monopolize this awareness, right? And keep it so to yourself, put it in little workbooks and trainings and all different types of things and create nonprofits around and things of that nature so you can accumulate millions and billions of dollars. The purpose of it is actually to bring forth accurate and effective change right don't right. speak of things and I, I see a lot of times we see nonprofits to speak of things that they're not able to do i'm going to change this man in six months or i'm going to change this man in a year according to your program dynamics but you can't determine how and when a man is going to change or women going to change in their lives right we have to have patience right empathy and common courtesy when we interact with one another 
especially when we come in from different aspects and even probably even roots of life. Right. I, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think that we are at a, a point in, in the world it, that people are just trying to, to stay alive. You know, yeah. they're not, they're not thinking about what's, what's at the end, what's at the pearly gates, what's at the, you know, when I, when this is all over, what am I going to have left on the table? What is my legacy? Mm. Um, we, we don't have time to think about that right now. Like you but said, that the young man. Alive. That's what keeps right. us alive. That, that, that desire to know. I did a show of it last week, you know, called The Desire to Know. That desire to know, you know, what is waiting for your other side? You know, what what is the beauty of your journey? You know, what what would it take out of your life to stop, to understand what others are going through, right? And be a part of that journey, be a part of that change, and then go back to different dynamics in your life when it's all over, you know, when this is all structured. Why? Because this is a part of the human family, right? What we master, what we master as far as in brain surgery and, and, and cancer treatments and things of that nature benefits millions of people, not just this one person that's in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we're dealing with also the inner workings of, of who we are in the mind, who we are in the spirit, what our soul entails, because we're going through so many different changes that's in the world. And we're trying to make sense of it, but somehow put it in a bottle, right? So we can always go back to revisit it and say, hey, this is what it really looks like, you know, and I'm protected by it because I actually captured it. No, we, we can't capture life, right? Life is something that's always fleeing, right? No one owns it. No one has control over it, right? No one will be able to dominate it. We're able to live it to an extent and also to share it to a high extent. See, this is one of our blessings that we can share so much of who we are, even though we don't even know who we are. We have so many gifts that we can actually give out into the world, and we don't even know that we actually have those gifts. Right? See, this, this, is, this is the beauty of this life. We, we do things in a moment and say, how? Wow. How did I do that? Right? How was I? How was I so calm in this situation? Right? How was I able to take control of this situation and, and circumstances? And then you start seeing that, yo, I got a greater power of who I am than I actually realize. Like there, there's there's more to me than than meets the eye, right? right? But we can't. You have to understand that when you're living with the mental illness, all of that you can't see any of that. Yes. You know, someone can say to me tomorrow, you know, you're an amazing whatever. And because I'm living with this monster, I can't accept that. I don't know that I am worthy of something. I can't look at you and say you're worthy of something because I can't see it in myself. And I don't know what I'm looking for. You know, if we can say, if, if we can wake up in the morning and understand that Black people are in a constant um, stream of PTSD Every single day we're fighting, fighting the, on a train, fighting at work, fighting in traffic. And if we can understand that it's not just, you know, he's dealing with racism today. He's really with he's dealing with a complex case of PTSD because of who he is in the world. You know, we can't just keep um, putting a, a little name on these things. These are these are huge things. And so if, if you can't see why you're hurting, you can't see where that hurting came from. If you can't see your who in your circle is hurting you, then you're not going to be able to be nice to me. You're not going to be able to be kind to me. And that's where the mental health awareness comes in. We have to have more empathy for people, like you said, but we just have to keep learning and we have to keep accepting that not everybody is built. This is not a cookie cutter. You know, and so when you walk out that door in the morning, you don't know what that person across the hall from you is going through. So you say good morning, have a nice day, because that could be the only nice thing that that person is going to hear, you know, for a week. Mm -hmm. When you get on the train, excuse me, have a good day. That person, that's going to make their whole day. But if we can't see what's painting us and if we can't 
get down and, and learn what a generational trauma is and how it's affecting us today, then we're not going to be able to carry that forward. We're not going to be able to speak to our children about what they're really going through. Like that little boy is not just bored in class. There's more to him being bored in class. There's more to why he's acting out. Let's, let's look at his family life. Let's look at, you know, what illness his grandmother had and, and how that affects him today. If we keep ignoring this and trying to put a simple name on it, we're not going to get anywhere. You're right, because you got you got to bring a specialist in to deal with these issues, exactly. right? Right. And as we're seeing now, you know, kids are shooting teachers in school, other little kids, five, six year old, bring guns right. and shoot other students, 12, 13 years old, and things of that nature. And it's because the inner work is that's taking place that people deny. They don't right. want to see it, right? It right. doesn't exist, but it does. And as you say, these are learning curves for our existence. Uh, we, we don't take the learning curve that's given to us to analyze and dissect, you know what I'm saying, and modify, reproduce, and, and put back out there for correction, then what's the point of giving us lesson plans in the first place dealing with humanity? Right. While we receive the lesson plans, we will not take the lesson plans that's given to us and break them down in collectivity so we can actually understand what is the root of this problem. Why would the... Why would, People say, oh, why would God let these things happen? Why would Allah let these things happen, right? These things are happening for you to correct them. They're not there for you to lift at them and be marveled by them and be fascinated by them. They're there for you to address them and to actually correct these things that you're saying taking place within your communities, taking place within who you are as an individual, right? We have been given a lot of tools and resources that we have taken for granted, right? and not being able to apply to bring us to a greater level. Like, for instance, you read the Bible and you go in the book of Revelations, they talk about um, streets uh, paved with gold and, and, and silver and rubies and diamonds and all that, right? We can pave streets out here with the same things, right? And in, 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 in the same fashion of these are things that we wanted to do. You don't have to wait and get to these certain kingdoms that you're talking about to apply these things in certain places in our existence. However... Because we want to be greedy about these things and not share the abundance of, of what life offers us. Because no man makes gold, the earth creates gold. No man makes diamonds, the earth creates diamonds. So all these things that man run around here trying to possess, he doesn't create. They're given to us as gifts. And that's you why know, you have... I'm sorry. I no, I, I'm trying to get in where I fit in, you DD. Because you've been I, I'm through. trying to get in. I have been missing most of this wonderful <laughs> conversation <laughs> that you and Nathaniel are having. So I'm just trying to get in right now while my internet will allow me this one few moments. I, uh, you are one of my sheroes, Dee Dee. And I, you Thank know, you. whenever we strive to do something of good, you know, sometimes things will come along and try to prevent that and that's why I am so impressed with you on a daily basis and I know earlier you were saying that you have trouble seeing that in yourself and I understand that I, I understand it because how our minds plays tricks on us right? you know and that's what happens so many times we don't see in ourselves, sometimes what other people see in us. Right. And we cannot appreciate in ourselves what we cannot see. Exactly. And, but you, and I started to say this earlier, you know, you helped me to really understand more of what I do. You, uh, on a post one time said, you uh, posted about toxic positivity yeah. and I was like and I have to admit when I first saw that because you know I'm always saying be positive be positive positivity is the key be right. positive and when you posted that Didi I, at first I was like who How can you say? <laughs> she tagged you she tagged you too right <laughs> no. Huh? no she oh. was like I would like, <laughs> how, can, how can you say that? And I started really looking into it and thinking about.
about it. And I was like, yeah, it can be toxic if you are putting on a mask and you're presenting this positive front and inside you are falling apart, but you don't, you have this mask on and you don't want anybody to know. You don't you 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 don't want anybody to know that it's not all the time. You don't want anyone to know that we all we all to some degree have mental problems, right. especially black and brown people. You were Definitely. saying earlier, uh, PTSD. We all have it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that's 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 the beauty of actually looking at life on humanitarian aspect is understanding that we are not in this journey alone. We are collectively connected to all these different paths that a lot of us actually find ourselves on. We are all connected in one way or one degree or another. So separate ourselves, actually separate ourselves. And if we want to separate ourselves, the creator actually grants a lot of wishes to people that they don't realize. So you right. know, it's, it's it's a beautiful thing to realize that some of us understand that we have to have connectors in order to exist, right? I used to be an HIV tester. And one of the things that I used to do presentations about is that these receptors have to find something, have to find the cells in your body, the white blood cells in your body to attach themselves in to in order for it to infect you, right? And some people didn't have the attachment, you know what I'm saying, component for the receptors to their white blood cells, so they wasn't able to catch it. It's some work, right? And this is actually show us on a mathematical and on a scientific level that without the right receptors to the problems that we're addressing, without the right connectors and the right analysts of these things, we can't come to a determinant factor of what those things are and how they're going to placate in our society for centuries to come. We may not think about the next 100 centuries, but we should because it's a part of our existence. We want, we actually want to take our existence and stop it right here in this little small time frame that we have, right? This is a very minute time frame. Yes, I'm grateful for every ounce and every inch of light the Most High has given me every single day I wake up. But I'm also a realist. 100 years. And the society they say been been around for millions of years is a small amount of time. It is not a great amount of time, yeah. right? So the legacies that we place down and what we teach gives us that extension of time that we don't actually have actually here physically, but also gives that that time or spiritually or on a metaphysical level that time is also granted to us. I think that's why it's great. Miss Jeannie, you could never ever be toxic. <laughs> what? You what are, are you I mean, are you, you know, serious? I, oh, no. Her, let me tell you something. In this darkness, every day when I log on, I see that smile. And, and I'm not just saying that because you're on. Your smile is amazing. But I've always told you that. I've always told you that. There's no way that you could be toxic. <laughs> you know, you have loved me from the beginning. You've always been positive and always had to give something to me. Toxic positivity is, oh, you know, I'm not feeling well today. Oh, it'll be okay. Life goes on. Tomorrow's another day. And if somebody's telling you that every single day and not taking the time to listen to what you're really going through, that that's toxic. You could never be that. You are an amazing person. Your story is amazing. And so it's, I think that it's amazing that we ended up in the same place learning some of the same things, but we have different journeys and we need each other. You know, I live in dark and you live in light and we help each other meet in the middle. <laughs> you are Balance. so, you know, I was thinking and the re one reason I was so looking forward to this, uh, having you here with us, Dee Dee, is because I, I, I went down memory lane about how we first met and I even see the scenario of where I was sitting and you were sitting when when we first met. We were sitting mm -hmm. on the same side of the table. There yeah. was one person between us. 
and we went around the table and we were introducing ourselves. And when you started talking about that, the, the reason that you adopted the platform, your mental uh, health and how it has helped you to be able to, uh, by helping others. And I was so impressed by that. And, and, I, and as time has gone on and I have seen your struggles, but the fact that you show up, you still show up Thank you. and you don't show, you show up for other people, you know, and that it has helped me. That has really helped me because I'm like, Jeannie, yeah, you, you got a little bit of something going on up here that might not be all together. But Dee Dee shows up every day. And it's a struggle for her some days to just get out of bed. Mm. Just to get out of bed. Yeah. Oh, Dee Dee got a fan. No. Uh, oh, that's that my possible. sister. Huh? That's that, that, is, that is one of my sisters. Yeah, yes. she says you're a warrior. Let me see that sword. She, that sword she is um one of the reasons one of my reasons that every day, um, and that's another thing that we have to do. We have to embrace who's around us, the real people that are around us. Yeah. And she helps me get through the day every day for 20 years. 20 years. So beautiful. Thank you, Twinster. Oh, that <laughs> Thanks that's that's that. beautiful because that's so true, Didi. Because see, you're that in my life also. Oh, thank you. And and because you know how when you post something, and you may see certain people that like it, and it means more to you than if fifty a hundred. You're one of those people for oh, me when I you. post something, and you put your stamp on it. I say. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, don't know. Um, Nobody else have to say anything Didi like you. this. <laughs> thank you. You know, I, and you so know for, go ahead. That's, that makes me feel so special. Thank you. You are that special. special. That's thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I have two daughters and uh they're adults now, but their struggles started when they were much younger. And so my thing was, is that how can I say that I don't want to live and tell them that they have to live, you know, and push them to live and push them to try to be their best. That's another reason why I started the platform, because I know what it's like to be a teenager living with a mental illness. I know what it's like to raise teenagers with a mental illness. And I know that sometimes you may have to talk to a seven year old about how they're really feeling. You know, it's not because. I had a bad day. It could be I'm, bu I'm getting bullied by someone mm -hmm. and I'm trying to be brave and I don't know how to go home and tell my parents this. So that's another way. Another thing that I'd like to get out there is that we can't just keep ignoring our babies. You know, we have to think of them as all of our purpose and we have to start speaking into them to, like you said, to keep going for a hundred centuries. You know, they're our next generation. And they're lost because nobody's listening to them. Nobody's trying to fully understand what they're going through. And, you know, it's my story and it's your story too, Miss Jeannie, your story with domestic violence, you know, which is an amazing story. The teenagers are living in domestic violence situations, you know, with their boyfriends, 13 years old. Your story is important for generations. And if they keep trying to, if, if we suppress these stories, then we're doing a disservice to the kids in, in our next generation. You, you know, you are so right about that. Today, I was at a, a mosque meeting and the minister said that so many times we as older people will criticize and criticize and criticize our youth about, you know, look at those sagging pants or uh, look at that hair or look at how they're talking before we actually get to know who we're dealing with on a mental level. And then once we connect with those, with everyone on that level and start right. to strive to understand people exactly. instead of passing judgment on people and start to really love people, start to really understand that sometimes 
that's all a person is seeking is love. Exactly. exactly. And you were you, you said you. something earlier about uh, how we never know what someone is going through. That's why it's always so important to me to be able to offer a smile, offer a word of kindness, because that clerk in the gro grocery store, the one that is uh, uh, ringing up your food or ringing up your purchase, that won't even look at you, sometimes won't even acknowledge that you're there. We don't know why. Right. That person may be in an abusive relationship. They may be going through mental problems. We don't know. So when we pass judgment and won't even offer a word of kindness and say, how are you doing? You know, how, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for that or thank you for that. Because if they don't speak to you and you don't speak to them, what? Exactly. You know, they didn't speak to me. So I'm not going to speak to them. No, mm -hmm. you be the first. Be the exactly. first to show that kindness. Exactly. And that goes a long way. That goes it does a long go way. a long way. Yes. Because they'll, they'll smile and then the next person will smile. And then the yes. next person will smile. And you yep. may just have a, um, I went to the doctor one time and I don't even remember what I said to this nurse. But when I went into my appointment and I came out, she pulled me to the side and she just told me her whole life story in like 15 minutes that we were both crying, crying. And she said, I love you. And, and I think that it's amazing that you showed up. And when I left, I was like, I don't know her, but she needed someone to tell her story to. And she right. needed somebody to understand her story and take the time to stop and understand her story. That and it, right. it, we're here that's to what we learn. need to do. Yeah, we had to learn from the stories of one another. Right, this is not your own storybook. Right, yes, exactly. if, you, if you were to sit down and write, if you really were to sit down and write your life story, you would have to put so many people in there, people that you wouldn't even that you don't even know. Like for instance, you know, on your life journey, you was walking out 34th Street and you ran across 50 people. You don't know those people, but they're part of your life journey. Part of your life. Say, yeah. On this day, I ran across 50 people. I don't know who they are, but I ran across these people on my path, right? Keep it to the most simplistic aspect possible because that's how it is. Very simplistic. We are not on individual paths, even though we may seem to be so, because we connect with others on this path. When you come to understand, like Jeannie said, she wanted to write her first book. After she finished her first book, now she had to meet a publisher, right? She had to meet a exactly. publisher. She had, she had to get. She had the book had to be edited. She had to meet a publisher, right? Then she had to go out there and do book signing. She had to get a signature down pack and stuff like that. <laughs> right? It was a lot of things that had to go down with that process. It's right? True. But actually enjoy, you know what I mean, this new development of her life. Right? So all the people that was there was a part of her path, part of her journey. The person that, the person that brought the book, that came and talked about the book, asked for the sign of the book, it's all a part of her path. She can never and, say, I made and, this on my own. You can never and, say it. And Nathaniel, see... That's why I'm always saying being grateful, grateful. for the moment, That's being right. grateful for That's what right. we have right now. That's right. Because to me, this synergy of you, Didi, and me, I am so grateful for that. Yeah, you know, definitely. and with me going through this problem that I just had with the internet, I just had a whole lesson given to me <laughs> <laughs> on being patient yeah, being and patient. really understanding. I'm like, why, why now? Why now? When I'm, why now? And uh, why not now? Now was a good time for me to really learn that whenever we are striving to do something a good, no matter what it is, whenever there may be a difficult factor involved in that, but is that going to stop us from continuing to strive to do of good because right. of the difficulty involved. Because if that is the case, then we should, we can just stop and give up on life. Because you, Nathaniel, you, Dee Dee, 
I know me, life has served up us some lessons. <laughs> has served us up some lessons. But the beautiful thing about it is that's where why we're here. It we're gave here, we're us here to tell our, the story. We had to tell the story. It. And our yeah. stories are not for us. Yeah, that's exactly. right. They're not. You know, I got it's, a story of re-entry coming out of prison. Diddy got a story of dealing, of, of dealing with depression. You know, Jeannie got a story of dealing with domestic violence, right? When we're looking at this, we're looking at societal issues that have to be addressed. These are, we are three entities in the world that can actually attest to these different, you know, realities of life, right? And, and, and the harm associated to them and also the release that comes from a disassociation with them or the understanding of what those things are that actually held us captive for so long. We mm -hmm. held captive in this life by so many things, and we don't really know what those things are. And what that says, um, Jeannie? I was, um, the other day, I, I think last week, they there was a story on the news about a man that started um, freaking out on the plane because the baby was crying. And everybody was, you know, saying that he was this, he was that, or whatever. Do you know that there are some of us that certain sounds, like go, it's like scratching nails on a chalkboard. Like one of my friends, she can't hear silverware clack together. I can't hear, you know, chewing. And these are all things that nobody pays attention to. And so that man was just, oh, he's crazy. Let's throw him off the plane. Nobody took the time. And people called me an idiot. I'm, I'm serious because I posted. Do you know that misophonia is a thing that is part of a mental illness that you can't hear certain sounds? And that baby probably set him off, you know. But if if we don't take the time to learn about these things, mm -hmm. then how are we going to interact with each other? And you know what about sound? You are so right. My husband cannot stand because he was in Vietnam. He's a Vietnam veteran See? and he deals with PTSD. And I have to be careful not to make sudden sounds, you know, mm -hmm. like how you may be on the internet and mm -hmm. then you click on an app and sound will pop out at you. That will totally rattle him. Yeah. That would totally throw his, he said, Ooh, that just threw me off. Yes. You know? Yes. So we don't know. We never know. And that's why I'm saying, and what is so important to listen, to understand people. We don't know. We have right. no idea what most of us are going through. It's almost that time for us to wrap this up, even though I've had a vacation. I had a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Nathaniel. I am so yeah. grateful to you. You know, I always talk about my gratitude for you. And this is one of those days I am truly grateful to you for carrying on in spite of the... Did you sweat a little bit, Nathaniel? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You were did cool you? as a cucumber. Yeah, well, as Miss Jeannie you know, said that we're... The energy, so I, I, was, I, was, I was in good hands. You know? Miss Jenny, Miss Jeannie said we're Brooklyn. Are, are you from Brooklyn? I am from Brooklyn. That's right. Oh yeah. So she said you two Brooklyn people will get along. <laughs> Just <laughs> right. even so, we need to connect. We need yeah. to connect. Do go face to face live and stuff yes, like that. Yes, yes. That would be do. amazing. Bring from a whole other perspective. Yes, this was a great opportunity. Thank you so much for having me. Oh no Thank problem. Thank you so yes. much. And uh, did you put up uh, uh, your podcast and give out your podcast information? Um, no, I didn't. But okay, people well, with com is yeah. my website, and when you go to my website, it will have all the information for my podcast and Twitter and and everything in there. So anyone can contact me. I always say that my my inbox is always open. If you need help, if you want to find something, let me know, and I'll help anyone get the help awesome. that they need. <clears throat> we'll out. And repeat and your, your website says, again. DivaWithDepression.com. DivaWithDepression.com. And your yes. sister said that's why our podcast and these social platforms are important. We must continue to have conversations and interactions with one another. Yes. This helps find the connections, the similarities, spread the word so we'll land on the right ears and hearts. Yes. 
And I agree with her 100%. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, well, stay with us for just okay. a minute because I like to end, Didi, and I'm so thankful that the internet gods uh, <laughs> let up on me for a minute so that we can have this moment of uh, meditation. Okay. Okay. In everyone that's in a safe place and you're comfortable, please close your eyes. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath to the count of four. Let it out slowly as though you're breathing through a straw. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax. Relax. Relax the top of your head. Relax. Relax your forehead. Your face. Come on down. Relax your neck. Move your neck, move. Ah, oh, that feels good. Relax your shoulders. Relax. Move down your arms. Relaxing, relaxing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come down your body, relaxing as you go. Relax. Relax your legs. Come on down your legs, relax. Relax your feet. Your toes. Wiggle your toes. Relax. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. I'm going to count slowly backwards from five. And we're going to take a deep breath. Five, four, three, two, one. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Stay with us for a moment, Dee Dee, when, as okay. we go off. Okay. Everyone, peace and blessings. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being with us today, Dee Dee. And please Thank subscribe you so much. to our channel, guys. We, we need y'all to move forward. Thanks a lot.